Welcome back. In this video, we will add the final touch to our networking code by handling errors when fetching and submitting data. Let's get started. Step one, define a state variable to track any errors that might occur. So error, the setter function is set error, and the initial value is an empty string. Step two, we will add try catch blocks to our fetch data and add post functions to handle any errors that might occur during the fetch or post operations. So a try block, close it after set is loading, add the catch block, and here you get access to the error. We're going to console log error fetching data for our convenience, and then call set is loading to false. Within the try block, we reset any error that was present. And within the catch block, we call set error with a message. Failed to fetch post list. So this error is feedback to the user. And this is for error logging. Similarly, for add post, after set is posting to true, we can add a try catch block. We're going to console.error, error adding new post. And we also specify the error itself. And I think this should also be changed to error instead of log. We call set error, passing in the string fail to add new post. In the try block, make sure to clear any errors that were present. Third and final step, we'll use the error state to render appropriate UI to the user. So within safe area view, if there is an error present, we're going to render a view component with the text error state variable. If there is no error, we render the existing JSX. For our error view, let's also add some styles. Style is equal to styles.errorcontainer. And for the text, style is equal to styles.errorText. And let's define the styles. Error container, background color, padding, border radius, border width, margin, and align items. For the error text, we set color, font size, and text align to center. If we now intentionally change the fetch data URL and take a look at the UI, we do have an error text strings must be rendered within a text component. We haven't wrapped our JSX within curly braces. So error, and there we go. Head back to the UI, and we can see the error component being displayed. Fail to fetch post list. Our Android device, by the way, is still not working, but that is completely okay. So this is how you handle errors when working with network requests in React Native. Now, a very, very important point you should be aware of is that localhost URLs do not work from the Android emulator. So you can make API requests to your local API endpoints from iOS devices, but from Android, you need workarounds like using your computer's IP address instead of localhost. I would suggest you read more about it in your free time. All right, before we conclude this section, I would like to highlight some debugging features in React Native, specifically for the iPhone simulator. Pressing Command-D on iOS brings up the developer menu. If the shortcut does not work, which is what is happening right now for me, you can open the device menu and shake to access the same. Here, I would like to focus on two debugging options. First, show element inspector. This allows you to inspect elements similar to a browser 
displaying the box model for any selected element. You can see height and width, padding and margin. You can also see background color, border radius, border width, and all the styles applied to the element. Second, I want to show the JavaScript debugger. Particularly relevant for this section as it lets you inspect network requests. For instance, after refreshing, you will notice the API call to slash post with the list of 10 posts as the response. Make a post request and see if you see that network request logged here in the debugger. But both the element inspector and the JS debugger are great tools for debugging React Native apps. With that, we come to the end of this section on networking in React Native. We've dived into making GET requests using the Fetch API, managing a loading state during background data fetching, implementing pull to refresh functionality with the Flatlist component, posting data to an API endpoint using the Fetch API, and finally, handling potential errors during these processes. We have covered nearly 70 videos, but with this one, we are concluding the fundamental concepts in React Native. In the upcoming sections of this series, we will dive into more advanced topics. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.